right. Hello, everyone. You're listening to You Got It with Warrior Woman 91. Today, we have a super cool guest. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this this woman. She's, uh, quite frankly, she doesn't know this, but she's one of my heroes. So, um, Senya, it's so good to have you on the show. Uh, for the audience that doesn't know, uh, this is Aya's girl on Twitter, so definitely uh, give her a follow. Uh, anyway, Senya, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for asking me, Kelly. This is exciting. And thank you. I, I did not know I was one of your heroes. I'm like... That made me blush. <laughs> like, I'm glad this is not a video. Because I'm looking like I just put on way too much blush. I'm red. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad this is not video either because I'm a little insecure. So we're we're all in the same boat here. Um, it's It's been a while since you and I have last talked. So before we get to kind of the meat of this interview, are, are there any other projects that you'd like to share um, uh, that you're working on currently or, that, or going forward? Uh, well, um, so since we last talked, I was still working at Daily Wire, and I'm no longer doing that. Uh, I am now working for a show on MTV called The Ride. Um, uh, so for the last, oh, for the last little bit, I've been on it for a second, um, I've been immersed in the world of hip-hop, but I can't tell you who the artist is yet because it hasn't been announced. Mm -hmm. Um... It will be announced probably by the time this show goes to air because uh, this pop artist is like all about like the social media, mm. and he's already started posting photos from the interviews. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe I can like mention that later. Um, so I don't know. That's that's what I've been doing since we last, you know, since we last talked. It's been it's been fun, you know. I. Did not expect to go from Daily Wire to MTV. <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool. I'm really excited for for um, everything you've got in store. Um, I think what interests me about you so much is that you've really pulled yourself up by the bootstraps in Hollywood. Um, is there? Uh, could you kind of tell the audience uh, what's what what it's been like uh, going from Texas to Hollywood producer? Yeah, actually. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, you make me sound so important. So Hollywood is really not that glamorous. Um, I let's see. Let me see if I can tell this in a in a not too long way. Um, so I started off as a waitress. Mm -hmm. I was a waitress all throughout my twenties, and um, I started doing a podcast. Uh, well, actually, a YouTube show back in the day called Beer Betties. And that was my first foray into uh, what is known as producing. I had no idea that it was producing. It was just, for me, it was like, oh, I just wanted to make videos about beer and go to beer festivals and, you know, have my friends all work on that. Uh, and that ended up being moderately successful for the time on mm -hmm. YouTube. And then I went from that to saying, you know what, I think I want to go to film school because maybe there's something to this. Uh, I did film school. Um, ended up not graduating from film school because right before my last semester started, I got picked up for my first show back in Texas as an office PA. And if you're going to go into the industry, working as a PA is great, but if you can get into the office PA like role, mm -hmm. it's perfect because you're in front of all of the uh, all the people who make all the decisions, so all the other producers. Mm -hmm. And so that ended up working out great for me because I went from doing that to uh, my next job being Dancing with the Stars. Uh, and if you get a big show like that on your resume, especially so early on in your career, that kind of makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, I knew no one in the industry, like nobody. And uh, I just happened to, you know, get my name passed over to someone that was working on my first show. And so they called me and we talked. They were all, they were an alumni of the uh, the film school that I was going to at the time. So they decided to give me a chance. And from there, it just, you know, it just kept going. Um, until, you know, at a certain aspect, you, when you're not in L.A., you, uh, you kind of hit a, a, a ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, and so after doing a few shows while still living in Texas, um, I looked over at my uh, boyfriend at the time, now husband, 
And we were like, yeah, it's time to move to L.A. <laughs> so we packed up, we packed up our, our, you know, our place and our two dogs, and we made the trip and uh, used all the connections. But I had to start again a little bit at the bottom uh, in the PA role. Mm. Um, but the thing is, one of the secrets about working out here is that no one tells you that just showing up and showing up and being excited about the job is like 65% of the of what makes you successful. Because mm-hmm. there's so many people that come out here and they have this idea that working in Hollywood is glamour and that it's just fun, there's no hard work. And it, that's not true at all. I mean, right. it, like, sometimes it's grunt work, you yeah. know? Like, even as, a, even as a producer, I was having to... Uh, iron, you know, talent clothes or, or sweep up after, you know, some, uh, a, a bit that we had to redo. So it's like, I had to go in and help clean it up to make sure that the, you know, everything could keep moving. So, yeah, I mean, I just kept working and working and, uh, being happy and excited about every job and people kept calling me back. That's really amazing because, I, I've noticed it. I don't. I don't know that it's it's necessarily just the Hollywood industry, but I've noticed it in other industries that I've worked in where the good attitude, the people with the good attitudes, are the ones that end up uh, making, you know, becoming more successful. I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it, is, it is true. Go ahead. No, it's like it is true. I mean, attitude is everything. You know, it's like, um, and I, and I mention it from the Hollywood perspective because when you're on set. Um, or, or even when you're in post production, you're you're in the office for like a good like ten, twelve hours. When you're on set, those hours can go up to sixteen. You know, yeah. And you want to be around someone who is going to be, and it's going to have a good attitude. You don't necessarily always have to be like super bubbly, happy, or anything like that. But at least have a good attitude. Have a have a great sense of humor because mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it's super important. Um, but the people that are miserable and that complain a lot and stuff like that, you just, you don't, you're like, I'm going to be on set with this person for at least, at least 12 hours. I, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. They just bring me down, you know? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, I think that's just great life advice for any industry, but I definitely can attest to long hour days require a positive attitude and a good sense of humor. <laughs> um, so what's it been like for you as a woman working in Hollywood? Because I know there's a lot of people that hear the horror stories of like the Harvey Weinstein encounters and all of that. Do you think that that's kind of the, just the norm of Hollywood or is Harvey Weinstein the very extreme? Oh, you know, I've had I've had it both ways. I've seen um, I, I've I've seen the I've seen the bad behavior, uh, but I've also worked with a lot of really good people that have been super protective of me. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, Kelly, you know me. Like, I I don't take crap from anybody. Yeah, you know. So like I like I am one to just walk away from a project before I will let you belittle me. Yeah. Like I'm like no I don't I don't need you you know I'm like I, I don't need you and there's nothing you can do that will destroy me you know like you you whatever. Yeah. So um so I I've, I've actually I guess I've been very lucky um, I've had a couple of friends who have not been so lucky and they've had to struggle but I'll tell you what. I don't know um, if this is the, I, I, I think the Me Too movement is still a really good thing, even though for, you know, it, it you know, there's been certain uh, players that have tried to politicize it. Mm-hmm. I think overall it's been a very good thing, but I think Hollywood still has such a long way to go, you yeah. know, because it, it is, um, there is a there is a little dirty secret here that they they still have a lot of issues uh, with um, equality for women mm-hmm. on one aspect, and they also have a, they do have a lot of issues as, as openly like uh, LGBT friendly as they say they are. It's still very hard for uh, for actors and actresses to be openly. Uh, fat, uh, homosexual. Mm-hmm. No, 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 sorry. To be openly gay. Yeah. Like it's still an issue because it, you know, there it does 
uh, bar them from getting roles or from doing certain things. So there's there's still a lot of uh, closeted uh, actors and actresses, and it's very sad, you know, because it's like you know you can't like preach one thing but then like behind the scenes act another. That is really um, interesting because but- they are the biggest perpetrators of this. This or they're the ones that are like ramming it down their, your throat. You have to be this way. You have to, you know, su- support this kind of a lifestyle. And then their dirty little secret is they're actually still discriminating against that group of people behind the scenes. Oh my god! Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, it's horrible. Like people are like, uh, you know, like I guess it's, it's Pride Month this month, and people are like, oh, um, you know, like why does there need to be a Pride? Well. There does need to be a pride because there is still an issue, even amongst the Hollywood set, uh, you know, amongst progressives, among, you know, just it, 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 it's still an issue. I think, I think what's funny is that of all the places that I've worked, the place that was the most LGBT friendly <laughs> was Daily Wire. <laughs> so, so, you know, because I'm like, you know, like at Daily Wire, they're like, you know what, I don't even care what you do behind closed doors. Just, just make sure that you just do a good job at work. That's all I care about. So. That's really yeah. funny. So I, I find that to be very funny. Um, so I do want to move on a little bit into the, the more political realm. Uh, have you faced any like discrimination, uh, in Hollywood for various political views or, um, have you had any issues with that? Uh, before Trump, I didn't really ever, politics was not that big on the forefront. Um, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, but during the election, I definitely closeted my views a lot, um, and so did a few of my coworkers, uh, because, you know, it's like, they, they definitely took uh, the, 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 the left, the liberals, the, you know, a lot of them took the, uh, the election very, very hard. Um, and then, I mean, I really... Yeah, like, I'll, I'll drop 2000, 2016 and 2017, I just laid low. Like, I really laid low because I didn't want to, you know, test that theory. Anytime someone would figure out that I was not maybe not, you know, as on the left as they have assumed that I was, mm-hmm. there would be a definite uh, look and then a distancing. Mm-hmm. Um. But job-wise, I mean, because, let's see, 2018, I was with Daily Wire, and then since then, uh, more people, like, when they see that I've worked, I, I worked on Ben's show, mm-hmm. um, more often than not, people are curious now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not even, a, it, it, it's not uh, discriminatory. And I know that that happens. I know that, you know, it, again, I'm not, I was not as open before Daily Wire, but post-Daily Wire, I kind of have to be now, because it's like, oh... You worked on Ben's show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like guilt by association. So now I'm like, I have to be, you know, out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, if anything, people are, they, they're, they're more like curious, like, oh, what is Ben like? You know, what is, what was working there like? What was, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it, so, no, I mean, I haven't met too much discrimination, but then I also, don't, I still don't really talk about my views. Like, when people find out that I work for Ben, it's more like they... <laughs> I listen. I listen a lot. Mm-hmm. Because it at the end of the day, it feels like they have all these things they want to say politically and all these arguments they've heard Ben, you know, say, and, and they just want to, you know, rip butt what he says, but also respect that he is able to come up with his arguments you know, in a fact-based way, and, and, but they have these things to say, and they just, they, they just need to get it out, so it kind of feels like they want to argue with Ben, but since I, you know, worked for Ben, and they'll, they'll probably never, ever, ever meet Ben, yeah, they just do it to me, yeah, so I sit and listen, and uh, smile, and nod, and be like, oh, those are all valid points, okay, <laughs> and then that's that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've had similar encounters with people that, and it, I think, 
it's not just Ben. I've had people, oh, you know this person? Well, why don't you tell them? Because they know they know that they may never have the opportunity to ask them or tell them whatever it is. Could you please tell them? Or, or they'll just start addressing something that somebody else said that you're associated with and... Uh, and you're supposed to somehow defend this, even though you weren't the one involved necessarily. <laughs> it yeah. seems to happen a lot. It's it's, just, it's funny to me because I'm like, uh, you do realize that he posts his Daily Wire email on Twitter. So if you if you like really want to get something off your chest, you can email him. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's funny to me. Yeah. So um, moving on, or kind of continuing with with the political discussion. Um, Sure. Donald Trump, uh, I know uh, okay. both of us are kind of out of the political sphere right now, but um, how? I guess my, my biggest question for you is, has his presidency just kind of as a whole, has it been a, a net positive in your mind, or has it been a net negative, or kind of in the middle? Mm. Um, I know there's been so many things people have been talking about, and there's been so many think pieces of, you know, what the Donald Trump presidency means and blah 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 but is there something like is there such thing as a chaotic neutral mm-hmm. okay it, like because in a way yeah yeah right now his presidency means so much and it's going to have these you know quote unquote long lasting ramifications um and, and that's only really for people who really really follow politics like just that are hardcore about it but a good majority of the nation you know just half-heartedly barely give politics five minutes a day you mm-hmm. know and I and now being on that side of the coin where or that side of the world where I am uh, you know like not even following politics you know hardly barely whatever mm-hmm. uh, it, it seems Donald Trump's presidency seems to, like, from the outside point of view, seems a bit chaotic. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I'm not sure, like, it's going to have these long-standing ramifications that a lot of people think it will, Mm -hmm. you know? Because, like, the outside world's like, oh, you know, he's crazy, but the economy is good. And people in politics sometimes forget that people that don't follow politics are busy just living their day-to-day lives. Right. And they just want to know, like, if they're going to be able to have a good job and be able to take care of their kids. And that's that's all they care about, you know? And so I, I don't know if, if Donald Trump's presidency is a whatever. It, I don't know if it's going to have – I think it's going to be more like, oh, people will look back one day and be like, oh, my gosh, we had a reality TV star as a president one time. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. I mean, kind of like people look... Maybe maybe I'm being too optimistic, but that's what it feels like. I mean, I do think so, because I think uh, to a certain extent, although, of course, the Obama administration did have some longer-lasting effects on politics, I think that in the long term, I think he... uh, And this is not to downplay those, those, uh, those changes that he made, but... It's not been the, oh my gosh, the, the world ended because of the Obama administration, kind of like how the left, the left wanted us to believe, oh my gosh, the world is ending because of the Bush administration. And prior to that, the, the, I'm sure the right was, I was too young to know, but uh, the, the Clinton administration, I'm sure that was the end of the world or whatever it happened to be. Um, yeah. It's just kind of like whoever is in the office now, we all have to panic. We all have to melt down over it. And then you move Mm -hmm. on and then it's the next president that's the be all to end all. And you think, well, weren't you guys upset about this guy? Cause first it was Bush that was the devil or Satan incarnate. And now it's Trump. And I, Uh and I'm just looking back and like, but you guys hated Bush. I thought he was the worst. No, 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 Kelly. It's Trump. That's now the worst. It's Trump. That's now the worst. So it just feels like, you know, whatever's happening right now is like, the the trump the traumatic oh my gosh everything's melting down moment and then uh once we you know come another eight years it'll be whatever's happening right then well also uh i think it feels more that way because we are so uh we're we're a culture that's so immersed in social media Mm -hmm. and and you know all these companies have to make money 
And so what's the, what's the best way to make money and drive, um, traffic to your site and that's to be like oh my god the world is ending and here's why <laughs> you know or if you're a buzzfeed list these are all these are the top 10 ways that your life sucks and how to fix them you know? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah well buzzfeed i've been i've been informed by buzzfeed that i cannot write for them in their in their public forum if i have any political messaging so they would never dare to put anything political on their site now would they um but this is actually a really good segue because we're starting to talk about social media and this is kind of the big reason why everybody wants to hear from you aside from the fact that you were a formerly ben's producer um is you're a huge twitter user Twitter is your thing. Yes. So uh, when I first yes. met you, uh, I, I was shocked that you recognized me for my own uh, Twitter profile. <laughs> and, so, and I was, I, I was a, a little bit taken aback because that doesn't happen very often. But um, I, I was just kind of wanting to know from you, first of all, wh- what do you think the political uh, climate would be like if we didn't have social media, especially if we didn't have Twitter? I think people would be shocked if they actually talked to each other. <laughs> I think on Twitter, I mean, because, you know, we all have always lived in our own little bubbles. Uh, but I think that uh, Twitter is definitely great. I mean, Facebook is good, too. Uh, Facebook, you can still live in your own bubble. And Twitter, you can absolutely live in your own bubble. But the thing is, Twitter makes it easier for you to go and look at what the other side is thinking. And... I do that a lot. Like, I will find, like, what a, one of the most progressive people and then just go read all of their replies. I could spend hours doing that and be like, oh, okay, so that's what these people think. Mm-hmm. Noted. Uh, I, I, so I think that Twitter is really good. I mean, I know, like, there's this war about, like, you know, they're, they're silencing conservatives and they're silent, and the progressives think that they're being silenced. I mean, both sides really, truly really think they're being silenced. Mm-hmm. And in some aspects, they are. Like, you know, they 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 have like the extremes that are definitely being silenced. Mm-hmm. Um but I think that I think that Twitter has been good because it definitely has shown me uh and shown other people, you know, if you do the same thing, if you go to you know, if you're a big progressive, like uh, one of my coworkers, he's a big time progressive, T White uh young Turks fan, but he follows Ben and he's a he's also a big fan of Ben and he's like, I like Ben because, you know, he deals in facts. Mm-hmm. Um but, like, I, I don't think that people would be as uh, as open-minded. I don't know if that's the correct word. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think people would be as knowledgeable of what the other side thinks if it weren't for something like Twitter. Yeah, I think it's so a dope. That's what I mean, like. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh. oh. oh I was just saying, I just, yeah. I, that's, what I meant, that's what I meant by people, by uh by saying that people would be shocked to actually talk to each other and, you know, find out at least, you know, the Twitter, you're able to do it through the safety of a, of a screen. Mm-hmm. I think it's a double-edged sword because I think that Twitter, as you said, it enables you to go and look at what the other side is saying and you can do it from the comfort of your mm-hmm. own home and you don't have to engage anybody if you don't want to. But I think the flip side is it also kind of enables you to live in your own little bubble. And so you only have to follow the people that agree with you. And you only have to mm-hmm. interact with the people that agree with you. And you don't have to. You, it actually takes an action on your part to go and uh, see what somebody else might be um, saying or thinking um, so I think it it, uh, it opens up a, another opportunity for people, and it also enables you to close off all of those opportunities if you don't want to uh, pers- yeah. participate in them. So just moving on, uh, do you think that politics, like, let's say that uh, there, there are people that are telling me that, like, once Donald Trump is no longer the president, then Twitter will become irrelevant because Donald Trump is the reason why Twitter exists or something like that. What would you say to people that are, are making the, the claim that Twitter is going to, you know, fall by the wayside after Trump's presidency? That is bullshit. <laughs> that is a complete and utter, excuse, excuse my language, that is complete and utter bullshit. <laughs> uh, because I'll tell you what, uh, you know, like I said, I was working, I'm working for now, you know, a show on MTV, and I'm dealing with a hip-hop star who's really big into social media. Mm-hmm. And, and 
all of his buddies are really big into social media. And social media, and, uh, sorry, and Twitter is, like, one of the top. Mm-hmm. And Twitter is great because it's, like, you have all of these people that are super famous. But uh, most of the time, I have felt, like, so working for this, this you know, hip-hop guy, I have found that more often than not, um, with social media, uh, there are... It works differently for all the other for all the other celebrities, but what I have found is that when it comes to social media, a lot of times they have teams that run their Facebook page, mm-hmm. that run their Instagram page, and uh, you know, or run you know what other other social media platforms for them. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times they themselves run Twitter. And so you have all of these big, uh, these these big personalities, these you know celebrities that have become accessible to the general public through Twitter, mm-hmm. and that is what I think is going to be Twitter's lasting. You know, that it's going to keep Twitter strong, if that makes any sense, because that's the place where people can be like, uh, you know, like for instance, we'll talk Ben. Ben runs his own Twitter account. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, like, so if people want to say something to Ben, they know they can go to Twitter and say it to him. Will Ben see it? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, he's got, like, over 2 million followers, but, you know, there is that possibility that he will. Mm-hmm. Then you have someone like, um, you have someone like this hip-hop star uh, that I'm working with. Um, he, you know, he runs his Twitter, but he also runs his Instagram. Mm-hmm. And he's, uh, what do you call it? And he is constantly on his Instagram replying to people mm-hmm. and you know or like uh, or, uh, Justin Justin Biber's the same way uh, Bieber I can never say his name right <laughs> the same way like he responds to people on Instagram and on Twitter so I, I think I think that's I think Twitter and Instagram are the two places where uh, that will always be important to people because mm-hmm. they're like oh I can go talk to so and so and you know they might actually see my message whereas like Back in the day, you know, like when I was a kid, if you wanted to, you know, send a message to your favorite celebrity, you had to get out a piece of paper and write to the fan club or write to the management team, and maybe, maybe you might get an answer. Mm -hmm. But I think that social media has made uh, people, uh, you know, celebrities and politicians and, uh, you know, all of the quote-unquote elite accessible in a way. Um, And to be fair, I think that's where Facebook kind of messed up because Mm -hmm. Facebook doesn't feel that way. Like, Facebook is, like, it's personal, it's where you're going to go talk to your friends and family, and especially post this, you know, this last election. (laughs) A lot of people aren't wanting to talk to their friends and family, so you're seeing the use of Facebook go down a little bit. I don't know if that's the reason, but that's one of my (laughs) things. And, uh, uh, but, like, you know, you see, you know, Instagram usage going up, you see Twitter usage going up, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. That That is the main draw, I would find, uh, with Twitter especially, um, because it, it kind of levels the playing field, especially this is why I loved the old Twitter where very few people were actually verified um, because it really yeah. leveled the playing field. You could talk to any of these people and they would be more likely to see your posts and interact with you. Uh, and that's why whenever uh-huh. they started handing out verified check marks, I was like, well, that's not, that's kind of uh, making it more like Facebook a little bit, because uh, it kind of uh-huh. blocks people off a little bit more from the masses. And I think that is the the biggest draw to Twitter is that whether it's Trump or it's some other celebrity, um, you, uh, you actually have the opportunity to basically text them um, and mm-hmm. possibly get a response. So it, it does, it, again, yeah, yeah. It, it's that leveling of the playing field and making everybody feel like they're all human beings, <laughs> which they really are, um, that I think is the mm-hmm. biggest draw. Oh, yeah. No, 1,000%. You said it much better than I did. <laughs> like, 1,000%. So um, the final question, I ask this to everybody, but this is very important that I ask this to you because you are the expert on this. Who, who, are, the best, who are the best Twitter accounts to follow on Twitter? The best Twitter accounts? Yes. Ooh, God, I have a list. <laughs> um, well, if you go to my Twitter account, you will see on my profile that I am officially, because I, I 
changed it yesterday. I am officially a comfortably smug stan account. <laughs> no, I do not consider myself a comfortably smug minion. I am a comfortably smug stan. And I realized it was really bad because yesterday when Trump tweeted about, you know, the tariff on Mexico, mm-hmm. Comfortably Smug was not on Twitter, and it made me so sad. <laughs> and, and you know, and Ben uh, was tweeting about it, and I so wanted to, like, do a Comfortably Smug impression and be like, you almost had it right, Lib. You know, Comfortably <laughs> Smug called Ben Lib all the uh-huh. time. So Comfortably Smug is definitely definitely a great one to follow um if you are looking for like hollywood stuff uh nt lawyer is great um he runs a website called crazy days and nights which is like my guilty pleasure Mm -hmm. uh it's it's all these uh these gossip blinds and um so he doesn't say who is you know who, who he's talking about he just gives uh hints in his uh, in his blind items and this dude i don't know who he is but he is good like he is on top of all the news before it breaks like he was on harvey weinstein harvey weinstein uh two or three years before everything you know broke mm-hmm. uh like the latest news about uh bradley cooper and his longtime girlfriend he actually had already you know, talked about that, like, a month ago, you know, so, I mean, this guy is, like, he's amazing, so, NG Lawyer is good, uh, Christian and Toto is, is really good for, uh, Hollywood reviews, mm-hmm. uh, so is Sunny Bunch, uh, Sunny Bunch is great, uh, not only just for Hollywood stuff, but, you know, cultural stuff, and then him going back and forth with, uh, with, uh, Comfortably Smug, so, for Hollywood, and then, of course, for politics, uh, Ben is great, um, uh, Ben Shapiro, he's great to follow because he's, you know, he's very fair. I mean, yeah, he's a conservative. He is absolutely 1,000% a conservative, but he's very fair in a lot of the stuff that he posts. Um, trying to think. There's so many. Like, I, I love, you know, Jonah and Charles Cook. Uh, Jonah Goldberg and mm-hmm. Charles Cook. Um, I know I'm forgetting some, but, oh, Alicia Krauss is always great. She's got beautiful pictures and a beautiful family, so she's fun to follow. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, there's you, Warrior Woman. <laughs> You're great. Well, I try. So that's my, that's my, that's my, like, not, that's my kind of long list, but could be longer list of people to follow. It is yeah. funny because every time I ask people this question, it's kind of been a shtick since my old show. I would always ask, who are your top three or... Uh, favorite person to follow on Twitter or whatever, and most people are like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm being put on the spot, I don't know what to say, and you're just like, oh, I already have a list, let me pull this thing out. <laughs> and so that's why I was like, I have to ask Senya this question, because she's the first person who is prepared with her answers. <laughs> so just for... If you're only going to follow one of those, and remember one of those, you have to follow Comfortably Smug. All right, everybody, I can't him completely. for for the audience's sake, I want everybody to write that down, follow Comfortably Smug. I also want to just throw in a couple of my own uh, favorite people on Twitter, follow at Matt's Idea Shop and at Neon Taster, because I would be remiss if I left those two out in, in Oh my God, the yes, vast. actually, it was, through, it was through Comfortably Smug that I found those two uh, Matt's Idea Shop and uh, Neon. Actually, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Matt's Idea Shop I found because he kept posting under Ben. And at the time, I was uh, I was a big follower of Ben as well before uh-huh. I was working for him. And so I that's when I that's how I found him. But Neon Taster I found through Comfortably Smug. I think the moral of the story is everybody should be following Comfortably Smug. <laughs> <laughs> In, in, in any respect, you can you can unfollow because you will see all of these other accounts if you follow Comfortably Smug. So that's just like the one account that you have to follow, basically. Yes, he's on. He's like on the ground floor of Twitter. I mean, he always finds the best accounts, and you're just like, how do you do it? How do you do it? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up. Senya, thank you so much for coming on. I really had a great time. I hope that everybody enjoys this episode as much as I have, and uh, I will talk to everybody again on the next episode. Thanks, Kelly. This was really fun, and don't be a stranger. All right.